Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing. Official Miss Jamaica. Official Miss Jamaica, man. It's going down, man. <laughs> hey, man, we out here, man, in Alabama. Mm -hmm. We in Birmingham. Yes, sir. Man, thanking God that we made it to see another day. But we got a special guest today, man. Miss Paulette Porter, Robbie. Roby. Roby. I knew I was going to mess that up. Because I got a friend named Robbie Spiller just like that. <laughs> so, Miss Roby. Uh, what do you go by, Paulette? Or Paulette. What do, I, when they come down here and they see you, what do they say? Paulette. Hey, how you doing, Miss Paulette? Uh -huh. are you the, hey, Miss Roby. Hey, Miss Roby, how you doing? I'm good. You I'm know, good. I seen one of your people come by this morning, man. It's just amazing the way that you interact with everybody, All man. the love that shown. The love is real. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, man, so just to tell our people a little bit about yourself, where we at, this is beautiful. I'm looking at all the history that we're, we're just surrounded, in, surrounded by. by. It's embracing us, man. Give us a little spill on where we're at, how this all began. Okay. This is the Civil Rights Activist Committee, home of the Foot Soldiers. We are here in Birmingham, Alabama, and this organization was founded by Tommy Wren in 1991, and he wanted a place for the Foot Soldiers to tell their story. Mm -hmm. So we come in and we talk and we talk about things that we need to strategize on and Voting is a must. We must vote. If you come up in here, you can't talk politics if you don't vote. Mm -hmm. So it is very important for us to continue to register our young to vote so that they can be a part of the process of the world. And the foot soldiers do make a difference. Yes, they make a difference. Wow. Foot soldiers, everyone wants to know, what is a foot soldier? Yes. A foot soldier was anyone that participated in the civil rights movement back in the 1950s, late 50s and 1960s. Uh, perhaps you might have put money into the collection plate to help get the troops out of jail. Mm -hmm. You might have um, cooked chicken <laughs> for the <laughs> troops. You it's a contribution. Have, yes, yes. So whatever you did uh, during that time, uh, you was labor as a foot soldier. Because when you think about a soldier, and then much less a foot soldier, I'm thinking about a soldier who's walking around from place to place helping. Right. And giving assistance to whoever they can assist. Right. And that's what foot soldiers is all about. Okay. So we are the information center for the civil rights heritage trails that you see throughout the city of Birmingham. And there are over 800 trails out there. So... Mm -hmm. Um, we are continuing to uh, do a condition report so that we can get those signs um, up to date with QR codes. So if we're not there, then you can just place your phone and get the information about mm -hmm. that sign. How mm -hmm. many foot soldiers are there? Oh, you have thousands and thousands. And there's of not only located here, they're, they're all around this the world? This is all over, all over the world. You have people that was here in the 60s, and there are gone to other states now so they're still participating in doing what they need to do um and their offices everywhere so yes. this is the headquarters no this is the headquarters and we don't have another headquarters in any other state but you have you so you don't have offices that they can you know um, no it's meet. not like the NAACP okay that's what I was wondering yes. uh-huh so how do they um communicate with you on what they need to do and so forth well anytime they come to Birmingham they will always stop by Oh, okay. They will always stop by, and um, sometimes they call. Well, we have school groups that comes in, mm -hmm. and um, we go out and we speak to other um, states, and if they call for us, we come. Mm -hmm. Wow. So mm -hmm. I think last time we was here, you were in a magazine. Uh, I know, very beautiful in very that magazine, I'm picture, telling you. Man. What oh. was Give us, a, give us an understanding That's of what was going on. Hold on, let me tell you the name of, this, got it. The, now, the name see, of that magazine. She's going to tell you. Let, 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 uh, let. 
Well, Cerise D. Oh, okay. Cerise D. Oh, you got your notes. So you got, want, she's capping notes. on me. I yeah, got my notes Cerise here. Cerise D. Uh, Miss Newman's from um, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, called and wanted to do an interview. Um, and I went up for the interview and did a. Um, they fixed me all photo up. shoot and yeah, everything. Photo yeah. shoot. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was yes. beautiful. But it was really all about an uh, interview, like mm-hmm. you all are doing. And she just wanted to know what we was all about and what we were doing to continue the legacy of this organization. So, like I said, voting is a must. We yeah. got to try to continue to educate our kids about voting and making sure that they are a part of the process. But I want to know, um, because <clears throat> you were born and raised here, right? Yes. And you became a foot soldier at the age of, age of 13. Yes. So what um, motivated you to do that? Well, at the time, I just wanted to be able to do some of the things that we weren't able to do, like go to the library or either walk across the park. We couldn't drink out of the water fountains. We had to have uh, our own bathroom, black colored bathrooms. So not only just getting involved, it was like... Were your parents involved? My mother was. Okay, because you know it has to be like motive. You see you <clears throat> Well, see my that mother example. was because my mother, she attended the mass meetings okay. so that she could know what was going on in the city. Okay. Uh, she wasn't out front. Mm-hmm. And I remember the day that I left school, she told us that morning not to get involved because she didn't want to lose her job. Mm. And um, where was she working at that time? She was working for the Birmingham uh, Housing Authority. Okay. And um, got to school, and unfortunately, <laughs> 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 I just got caught up. I know that I was not supposed to go, but and she lost her job because of you. No, she didn't lose her job, oh, okay. girl. No, <laughs> thank God. Oh my God, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't lose her job, but. Um, she didn't want to. Okay. And not only my mother, but other parents was telling the children the same thing because that is what the employers was doing to, to them. To them when they them. found out wow. that their children was uh, participating mm-hmm. in the movement. Mm. Mm-hmm. So what did she find what did she say when she finally found out that you got ahead of yourself and got in there? <laughs> I thought she was gonna whoop me, but she didn't. Um, she just asked me, you disobeyed. I said, yeah, but I just got caught up, mom. I just got caught up. I I was pushed out with the crowd. But now after I marched about two blocks, I saw my sister. <laughs> and after I saw my sister, I said, she can't tell on me cause she's out here too. <laughs> Man, that's, so that's I just dope. continued Continue. and, and, uh, my sister continued, uh, after we got to 16th Street Church, I think she, my sister stayed at the church to um, help serve the troop. Mm-hmm. And I went out. Um, Reverend Bevel had us going out of the church in 50s and made sure that we stayed on the sidewalk because we didn't have a permit to march. Mm-hmm. And So um, everything was still done in... Accordingly, it wasn't like just uh, going out here and I'm. They're getting permits. They're doing everything by the law, so to say. No, no, it was it was different. And uh, I think I got a block away from the church, and that's when I was put onto a yellow school bus. Now you got to realize we didn't ride school buses then, mm. so that was really a treat. For, for us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to get on that yellow school bus. And we sing those songs, those freedom songs, and we just, those freedom songs really help. It helped Motivate. Me. Motivate. Mm-hmm. It helped And you're me. 13. Yeah, 13 years old, and you're, you're out there, and you're just singing those songs, and it, it got us over. Wow. Where was your father during this time? Where was your father during My this time? My father was living in Philadelphia at the time. Mm-hmm. My mother and father was not together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he, although he was in Philadelphia, did he do anything with um, civil rights? Uh, my father was in the U.S. Navy, but 
not at that time. Okay. But he had been in the U.S. Navy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So was he a part of your life at all? Oh, yes. We, oh, yes. Oh, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering mm -hmm. because of distance and him not being there. Right. Well, the, well, he was still a part of our lives because he called and mm -hmm. talked and birthdays, Christmas. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I just, I, like I said, looking at the history that's wrapped around us and looking at Dr. King and all the different pictures and, you know, just the kids and stuff, man, to come in here on a daily basis. For how many years you been here? We've been here since 1991. Okay, and coming in, looking at all this history, I know it has to be an embedded motivation, you know, to, to just have to, you know, come in and gear up for this whole, the, the whole scenery has been dope. You've blessed our kids ever since we've been coming here. Well, we've been here since 1991, but sure, it has changed, and it's a difference now because we, we did a rebranding in 2014 with UAB. Okay. So... Um, we're trying to move it in a direction where it can be more than just coming in telling your story. Yeah, yeah, I get okay. it. Okay, so uh, we want you to be involved and be diversity and uh, do what we need to do. Like I said, voting, we got to, got to vote. We to got to educate our young about voting. Is there any entertainers that come through here when they come into town to perform or anything like that? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, Ricky Smiley has been Shout through. out Ricky Smiley. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Love what he does. Yeah, Ricky does. Smiley has been through here. And um, a lot of, uh, like, um, Joseph Lowry. Yeah. John Lewis. Wow. Uh, C.T. Vivian. Mm hmm Miss Borden. Wow. They all been here. Yeah. I've been with those people. Wow. That's, that's got to so, be, that's amazing. Yeah. Um. And and just the, the the I remember when I first came, it was just amazing the stories that you guys uh, told us about the the girls that were in the church that you know things that happened here in over history that's in our history books on the sixteenth sixteenth Street yeah, Church yeah, yeah sixteenth um, Street Church. So we're, how was that when you know because just well, run us through down and through was that, that the worst thing you've ever seen in Birmingham growing up at the time I would say yes. When the church was bombed. Let's talk about it a little bit. Um, Cynthia Wesley, mother, uh, Miss Wesley taught me at W.C. Davis Elementary School in the second grade. So I had a chance to know Cynthia before the church bombing. And not only that, Cynthia was in the band at Elman High School with me. We had band practice that Friday. Okay. She played clarinet. I played clarinet. My sister played clarinet. Okay. So we all was, you know, together. And uh, the Collins young lady, her sister Jamie was in my class. Mm. Um, Sarah was the survivor. Yes, because I heard there was one survivor. Yeah, Sarah was the survivor, but Jamie was in my class. And their sister... Was so killed. you knew them personally? Yes, yes. Um, I can remember going down to the hospital, uh, UAB, the day of the church bombing, because um, we lived in the South Side Housing Project, which is like three blocks from UAB. Mm -hmm. And instead of going to church, that Sunday, we decided to go down to the hospital. And I remember seeing Miss Wesley uh, sitting outside on the wall. And uh, her husband was trying to console her. Mm -hmm. And he was telling her that maybe Cynthia was looking for him because he had attended church that Sunday uh, with her. Okay. And... Um, not knowing that she was dead at the time, but I do remember that. And that. it was really, really, it was just a day of chaos. It was just, oh, you just didn't know what to do. Uh, we cried. We sing. It was just, it was awful. Wow. And I know that a lot of people were mourning 
But um, how did the young lady who actually survived, how did she handle it? Because, you know, sometimes in life, when you go through a certain situation and out of everybody you survive, you question a lot of things. Like, why me? Well, she didn't handle it. I, 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 I can't say how it was. I do remember talking to uh, Jamie. Mm-hmm her sister, and she just told me that she felt like her playmate was taken from her because she was always get home from school and her and her sister would play together. So um, Sarah, I don't know, Sarah was kind of bitter about it from the beginning, but now she's beginning to open up and to go and out, and she does a lot of speaking. And she has written a book now. What's the, the book called? Look, the Fifth Look Girl. Oh. The Fifth Look Girl. And where, do you know where we can find that book? I have it here. You do? Yes. Okay, awesome. I need to see that book. Okay. Okay. That, that's a, well, how long did she write that book? Uh, it was just written last year in 2020. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it took her a while, but she finally did it. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. I so know you've read it. I have. <laughs> so um just man like i said uh, that has to be something that she holds very very dear to her heart and um uh, that next time maybe we come through and try to get old though right, right. And have her on the show um so when you look at like that was other instances as well give us some more examples of things yeah, that happened gonna... during that time that that really uh um that that really caused uh Things to be dim at the time, but at the end of the day, it was just a part of our history, and we have to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> of course, you know, Bull Connor was the city commissioner at mm-hmm. that time, and uh, I was afraid of Bull Connor because of the things that he did to the blacks here in the city of Birmingham. Such as? You know, uh, during the demonstration, <laughs> He, he would ride around in a white army tank. Wow. Um, he wouldn't get out and be among the firemen and the police officers, mm-hmm. though he stayed in the tank. Mm. Mm. Scared. Scared, yeah. And, of course, Walter Gaston, the young man, uh, that we use for the, our logo, where the dog bite him in the side. Mm-hmm. I grew up with him. Wow. He, okay, so it was just you, it, oh, just to think about some of the things that occurred during that time, and how we had to run. How they put the water hoses on us. How the dogs attacked us. And not even that, it's just the way that, that the police officers would um, just hold you, just hold you for the dog to bite you. Or, oh, it was mm-hmm. just terrible. Wow. It was just terrible. Wow. But, um, so, hold on. But um, <laughs> I know that this city, um, and Martin Luther King, named it like the most racist city in the South. Yes. And I wanted to know, because with you growing up and living here, I want to know what you experienced personally, not just seeing anything, but just what was your personal experience, the most, um, I want to say, racist thing that you've ever had to encounter, and how did you handle it? The most racist thing that I had to encounter was... We lived not far from Five Points South. And what amazed me is how we had to stay on a route to go to the store. Mm. It's like we couldn't walk across the park. We had to go a certain way. And for us not to be able to walk on one side of 20th Street, Mm -hmm. we had to make sure we go across the street to the hardware store up in Five Point South, and we 
go to the Hill grocery store, do what we d need to get and get back. And we had a route. And if you get off of the route, then you had the white people would come out and call you a little nigger. Or, come here, you little nigger. And we had to run for our lives because what would they have done if they would have caught us? Mm -hmm. And our parents might have not known where we was. Right. If they would have caught us. Mm -hmm. But we always travel in a group. You have two or three that would be with you. So we never did go to places alone. You know, like if I s decide to just go to the store, mm -hmm. um, it was always someone with you. So being a, over the years, being able to see all of these changes that happened from a place where it was such a racist, out in the open, straight in your face, calling you all these different names, names. trying to kill you, trying to do all, to all of the gradual um, improvement, so to say, where it's not so in your face anymore. Because it's, it's out there, but it's just not so in your face anymore. Right. It's so, not so in your face anymore. And it's how like, do you feel about it? It's that? like, damn if you do and damn if you don't. Mm -hmm. It's like... Because um, before you knew who was who, now since it's, it's more covered, yeah. you don't always know. <laughs> Exactly. Wow. And you know, <laughs> the thing, exactly. Even, even even back during those times, I often think about the times when I was young and it seemed to be that to me, I looked up to Bubba Lang and I looked up to Skeeter Lang and I looked up to um, uh, the people in my community, Mr. Luther. These guys were black business owners who owned stores and we only went to those stores. And it, this was a time when we was coming out of uh, <clears throat> the segregated, you know, the times where we were separated and, um, the thing I, I can say is I look more up to those guys during that time. Do you, you remember those times? Yes, when it was yes, more? yeah. You, you, we had people like um, even Tommy Wren himself. Tommy was one of those people that uh, you look up to. Reverend Shuttlesworth was a person that you looked up to. Um, Mr. James Armstrong. Business owners. Abraham Woods. These were um, Richard Arrington was the mayor here. Sure, we looked up to him. We was glad for us to have a black mayor. Yeah, yeah. And, and Dr. Arrington was the mayor for over 20 years here in Birmingham. And um, even William A. Bell, he, I think he served his eight years as the mayor here in Birmingham. So we, 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 just, we just got to continue to um, improve. I know. And we got to keep God in our lives. Man. Exactly. Uh, I, I, t I told some uh, young kids that was uh, Sunday, I came by here, and they was around to Gabrielle eating. And uh, the young man asked me about the situation Friday with mm -hmm. the, the verdict. Oh. And I, I, my response to him was, keep God ahead of your life mm -hmm. and vote. There it is. He said to me, how do I talk to my constituents about voting? Because most of the young people don't feel like they vote matter. Exactly. Yes, it does. We got to make them realize that that vote matter. Mm. And you got to do it. Keep God ahead of your life and vote. Because they mm. feel that there's so much um, yeah. crooked Things that goes on in politics, politics that right. they feel like it's not going to be an honest count uh, or honest, you know what I mean? I want you to go to the poll to vote. Every time the poll open, if it's a candidate that's running that you don't want to vote for, write your own name on it. Just vote and put it in the, in the Deal. But before they vote, they need to go and research because some people go and vote and just go any, meeny, miny, mo and just pick anybody. They need to know who they're voting for. It, that's the education part of the voting process mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we need to continue to educate our kids about. Right. Mm -hmm. um, something you said earlier, you said um, that when you had to run or, you know, walking on that side of the street and the white people will come out and call you niggers and all of that. 
how from a point in back in the days when you had white people looking at you and calling you niggers compared to today's society where, as I said, it's not so in your face, but now you're seeing black folks calling each other niggas and stuff like that. How does, how do you feel about that? Because I can't really answer something like that because I was never in that, in those years of, you know, experiencing something like that. Well, I feel, I know that I hate to see our own call each other Mm -hmm. that, okay? Um, but they'll say it's not nigger, it's nigga. Never ignorant getting goals accomplished. So they put an acronym and a, a meaning behind it. So what do you think about that? And, and to further go into detail, they do it because they feel like it takes the power away from the word, the way that it's expressed by the ones who uh, used to use it. Right. I, I, that, you, that's, that's a good <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you give them power over your life when yeah. you let them use that word, word to control the narrative on how your attitude swings. Yes, I feel that way, and I mm-hmm. think that was something that Jay Z talked about with Oprah Winfrey because Oprah couldn't get past the fact that the hip hop culture used that word so loosely. But at the end of the day, he told her the same thing. You know, it's like you're giving people power over you to use this word to control the narrative on your attitude and the way that you carry yourself. Yes, so you have to take that power away. Right. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's that's it. That's what they do. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of times the, the way it's not really the words the young people use; it's the way that their character is when they're using it. A lot of times, there's conflict in the way that the behavior patterns happen, and a, there's a lot of dysfunctionality in our youth. So therefore, when they're using this word, and you look at them, you can all. You, you don't see the part where it could be something that would be taking power away. You see it as a way that we're looking at it in a negative way. So we have to be careful while we're using mm-hmm. these words and educate our youth on why we do what we do if we're going to do it. Because hip-hop has become a thing to where it is embracing our culture. It has made a lot of entrepreneurs. It has fed a lot of babies and mamas. So we got to be able to deal with it in a way that we can balance our people. If we're not doing that, then, then I don't see the use in not liking something and walking away from it. And not dealing with the facts because these are our children. That's right. And that's what we, that was the reason we started Boss Talk 101 was to do things to uh, be a part of a solution instead of a problem to help our youth. And we've seen so many different lives change. We are seeing people on the course of changing as we do the channel. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important part. No, everybody's not all the all the way that right they, we not all the way right but we're evolving daily so at the end of the day we don't put a person in a box to say they can't change so there's an opportunity for everybody that we deal with on boss talk 101 all right <laughs> 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 that's just a little spiel i'm sorry okay. i got caught up a little bit there. okay <laughs> So you answered the question for yeah yeah, yeah very because good. I want I wanted to I want because there's a bridge we want to be a bridge and not a wall because there is some times where we didn't educate on why these things was happening and there has to be people that step up and say this is why it happened or this is what we're doing because hip hop and uh, that generation of hip hop baby don't really know Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. But that's they the reason don't really why I know. asked it because then, as I said, um, you experienced the um, animosity of using of being called that word. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Compared to a lot of younger kids now who are using it loosely, or a lot of people have never been, you know, in that situation. That's the reason why I wanted to know, you know, your feelings. Your towards feelings that. toward it, yeah, right, yeah. Well, you know, today, if if you call me that today, it, it's not like. When you call me that back, back in the day, come on now. Okay, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if you want to call me that today, see, I I know better now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, seventy one yeah. years old <laughs> now, right. so you know I know I know yeah. what, about that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. so you can't you can't take my, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. either Control make me feel over, yeah, bad yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. because yeah. you I call like, me like that it. now. Like if it. you call me that now, and if you come in my face and call me, <laughs> that. oh wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Now we, we hey, don't get nothing started, man. Uh, when you when you um you look around and you look at the kids that come through here today, you know, and um what are we trying to do to connect with those children that's walking these these streets and 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 you know. Is there anything in the community that's being done to try to hang out and deal with the youth? Well, uh, we do have the Urban Impact um, that's a part of the um, 4th Avenue Business District here in Birmingham. Okay. That uh, we had a meeting yesterday uh, where we were trying to come together, uh, alliance, and, and, and make sure that 
we have the resources mm -hmm. for the kids when they come by here, especially the homeless. It's, it's really, really bad now. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't take them and put them in jail. Let's see if we can take them and do something with them and to help them uh, to keep them from being in the situation that they're in by giving them the resources they need or doing what you it, it's resources a medical thing like one. yeah it's it's to me it's it's, it's a mind yeah. thing. see and i've said that many times because and it's recently i really just thought about it because a lot of times they take kids or adults throw them in jail because they commit all these crimes but the reason why I thought about it, because since we started this podcast and we've spoken to so many people who have been through trouble times and overcame it as they got older. Mm -hmm. And when you really realize where it stems from, it stems from whether a single parent household, the father was absent, they or the mom threw them out on the streets. So it's a lot of mental illness that stems from childhood that haven't been... Um, properly treated with counseling, with being shown that there, it can be a difference. You can live a different life. They're thinking that this is all for me right here because of my environment. Right. You know what I mean? And, and you, we, we got to realize there is so much happening in the world today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that everyone's mind is not able to take what's going on and what's being given to us today. When I grew up, my grandmother, my great aunts, it was a root there. And mm -hmm. until we get back where we can have that root and branch out, you do the branch out, but you got to have that solid foundation. And I think that's where a lot of us are missing in the black communities, that foundation. <coughs> and that's totally very important. That I foundation. totally agree. I agree. I totally well. agree. That foundation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a, a house is being built on a rock instead of built on sand. But how can See we find that? See what I mean? You got to have though. a house on a rock. Yeah. And that's what people don't really, really, uh, uh, you know, they don't understand that. You know, that, that, and that rock stands in God, it stands in family. Mm -hmm. It stands in, 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 in mm -hmm. a mother and a father being there for their children. Mm -hmm. That That's the rock. The rock is the fact that you can stand on something, and I call it Christ. But, that's it. You know, other people might call it something else, and they got to get there. But I call it Christ, mm -hmm. you know. And, and uh, uh, you know, you know, he told pa Peter something. He said, upon this uh, rock, rock I build, build my, my church. church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right now. So, you know, that's word based. But I'm just saying, it's something about foundation that's right and foundation and that, has that, to that, be that, there yeah and he made that statement because of what peter had said that he was the christ mm -hmm. and he he recognized the christ in in jesus and mm -hmm. that's what made him say flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. so this is where you you got to be able to understand the foundation the history i mm -hmm. thought about that as well a genealogy yeah uh, if jesus genealogy is important i was got to be as well mm -hmm. that's right you know <laughs> knowing right. where you come from knowing where a you lot come of these from people you must. including they don't know who their father is grandfather nothing and then when you don't know where you're from you feel like you don't belong anywhere that's right walking in you know what i mean mm -hmm. and just like you talk about um having that foundation, that root, it's a case. I'm, what came to my mind is, is it because more people are having kids at a younger age? So, so some of these grandparents and great grandparents are so young. Yes. That they're not, they don't have that wisdom yet because wisdom comes with age. And you have to realize that if you're not educated and you didn't have the upbringing from their root. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you can't, you can't, you can't, you, you can't, you can't think that you can get out here and do things that, first of all, laws are there. And we know, here we go back into the justice part, wow. you know, we, 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 I, I'm about done with that. You know, it's, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> I yeah. told my husband on Friday, I'm done. You could just stick a fork in me. I'm done. <laughs> I don't even know which way to go, but I'm not going to give up on God. No, you no, can't. You can't. You I can't. got to keep him ahead of me. 
Mm-hmm. And I want him to just stay with me, just mm-hmm. be with me, just hold my hand and guide me and lead me the way you want me to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a that, like I said, there's a big you you got to look at the way things transpired. You look at our our youth, and you look at <clears throat> the the grandmothers today. You dealing with the grandmothers today. You do have the traditional grandmothers that's going to be okay, but then you have those that was in the crack era. You yes. got to think about them too, because yeah. crack was a pandemic that hit us by storm. Before that, it was heroin. There was things that was injected into a depressive state of people, people who had already been depressed, people who had already look at the stories that that she tells here today. Now you can't not in your mind not understand when you think about uh, our our people and what they've been through. As I was saying, you know, mm-hmm. um, our people have been through a lot, and 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 and. Other races and cultures have choose to ignore mm-hmm. what the people have endured from slavery all the way up until now. And so we acted like there needs to be no reparations. There need to be no understanding of the conditioning of our people or anything. And then we we know what happened. It's all over the walls. We see that. And, and you know how much counseling it would have to take for somebody who wasn't, wasn't there's something inside of us. I know. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I, I think about, I think about, uh, <laughs> I think about, like you said, the counseling. When, when, when I was coming up, it, it's like my mom would tell, don't do this, don't do this, don't behave this way, don't do this. Okay, you're not being obedient. But listen, mm-hmm. when, when my mom, my mom, used to discipline us, okay? Yeah, my dad and mom too. I mean, she would, she had four girls. That mean that was four splits in that house, Mm. okay? Along with her, that's five. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's real. Hey, that's a, hey, I wouldn't want to be in that house. My mother was, I couldn't deal with it. I mean, a lot of estrogen. Yeah, my mother was, she just, hey, she just didn't tolerate if you wasn't going to behave or the discipline she you let you have it. Wow. So there was no stepdad that came in? Uh, no. No. Okay. No. But I had my grandfathers. Okay. 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 My mother had about. Amen. And then I had a lot of uncles. Amen. Okay, that's, good. that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. Man, I tell you, man. And, just, and that's what we're talking about as far as when it comes down the to root. the family mm-hmm. and that root. You see what I'm saying? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So if someone wanted to become a foot soldier, how could they do so? Well, First of all, they just come in and fill out a membership form okay, and just go to work. Is there a fee with the membership form? $25. And that's the one-time fee? Yes. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. And that membership is for life? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. You know, um, like I said, I appreciate you for uh, 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 finding sitting. the time. Yeah, finding the time, man. You, we... We wanted to come through here and we wanted to get this done. And I think, I, I, hey, God has blessed us to make it happen. Uh, you are the reason for the season. All right. You know what I mean? So, so I like that. <laughs> uh, Ms. Paulette, just, um, you know, um, if you ever need anything from Boss Talk 101, you mm-hmm. know we love you. We've been coming down here for many years before we had even, God had even, we hadn't even thought of a Boss Talk or none of this. Okay. But God already knew. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I he do. already knew. Yes. So when we came that first day back in 09, 08 or whatever, whenever it was, it was around that time. And the kids were young. Oh, they was little. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it was so much that they, they were so into the books and everything that you guys had going on here. And I just want to tell you thank you. You're welcome. You know, me and my wife, we we, we come down here and like I said, it, it I, every time I come through I I, I take a memory back with mm-hmm. me. And I, it's because of you and people like you who, who you know, stand in the gaps and, and, and keep the history going. You know, a lot of times the schools are not telling the children like they used to. And so we have to make sure we That's do That's another thing. Uh, I, I, a lot of kids come in and tell me that we don't, we're don't not taught that in school. school. We're mm-hmm. not taught that in school. How can that change? Um, I don't know, but. That's my goal is to get, especially in the Birmingham City Schools, this needs to be taught in the city schools here in Birmingham. Wow. Okay. Uh, Hopefully it will get where it can be worldwide, but we are planning to do uh, something with the city schools 
to educate our kids about the civil rights movement here in Birmingham. It was, <clears throat> it's, it was so many stories I don't want to forget. It was this boy up on the picture. He'd been here for years, and I, you always gave me the story on the young man on the, on the picture. Uh, that's one of the boys that was killed the day of the church bomb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause we, you talk, uh, Johnny don't Robinson talk about the girls. and... Um, Oh, it was Johnny Robinson and I can't even think his name right now. Yeah, I just know I always was you. That that stuck out to me because it was a guy. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the heck? And, he, and and I didn't know about it. You know, it's it's just those stories that stick with me. Like, yeah. man, you know, like man, I remember she told me about this. And we had our little booklets. Y'all gave us some little pamphlets yes. and stuff, man. I, yes. I was so excited. Um, I never forget it. It was me and it wasn't the kids the first time. It was Jessica and and uh uh Papa. MJ mm -hmm. and you, mm -hmm. I believe that it was. And then we came back with the kids, and mm -hmm. it just like I said, not a time that we didn't come down through here and say, "Hey, man, if I'm coming back, from, I'm stopping through. I got to go <laughs> see my people, man." So, Miss Paulette, we love but you. But hold on, I want you to elaborate on um, the upcoming event in July next year that's going to be happening here. Hey. Oh, they are having the World Game is going to be in Birmingham next year, July the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. 11 and 12th, I think. Mm, and yes. how, that's a momentous occasion for here because it's yes. never happened here in Birmingham before. Where uh, is it going to be? It's going to be all over the city of Birmingham. They can have some things at the uh, Legacy Arena. There's going to be some things happening over at the um, Sloss Furnace. Mm -hmm. So whatever needs to be, I think they're going to do a beach over at Sloss Furnace for the volleyball and they just going to fix it up. So mm. hey. I'm, we're all excited about it. Yeah, that's a lot of sports. There's maybe a lot of different games. Yes. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe yeah, we just make a trip wondering. down through here and hang yes, out. Yes, why yeah. not? That's a, that's a birthday. We're going to find you because well. we know you got the keys to the yes, city. Yes, you know? I know. <laughs> <laughs> she so said, park that car right there and don't worry about nothing. No. Just come on in. You're going to have to book that hotel. park here. you got to have everything in advance. Yeah, Because I'm sure the whole town going to be packed. Oh, man, there's going to be people here from everywhere. There's going to be a lot of people here in Birmingham. Y'all wow. gonna be ready? Are, are you? Y'all yeah. gonna be ready for Don't that? Don't you see our city is just oh, it's just blooming now. I just hey. love I it. I can't imagine how this wing place line gonna be. Oh out. man, I'm oh, gonna go. Oh, yeah, I'm going. I'm time. going now next when I leave. Green when acres. I get up, yeah, right. As soon as I get up and put, man. yeah, I'm going right next door and They're get my chickens. Crowded. Oh, and I'm moving on. <laughs> You got to come by Green Acres Chicken. You got They're to. I'll be over there. That got me in here because I'm like, man, I got to get over there next. Man, wow. but is there anything else that we might have forgotten to touch on that you'd like to elaborate on? Other activities that may be coming up? Uh, well, we are, like I said, we're just getting we are excited about the world game. So we're doing things to try to make sure that it all is together. Prep and prepare. Okay. Prep and prepare. Amen, exactly. man. So, man, we love you, Miss Paulette. Thank you so we love much. You and I love you all. Hey, too. man, Boss Talk One Hundred and One is official. Uh, now we can start. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, thank you so much for inviting us in. And um, like I said, when we come through here, whether we're setting up or not, we're stopping. I know. And I thank God for you. And I know that He's going to continue to bless people through coming through this establishment. And we're going to keep you in our prayers as we always ready do. And we just, you know, we just thank God that you was able to you know, let the people see because the people now can say, hey, you know what, when I go through that, I got to stop by there. Right. Yes. You please know what do. I mean? <laughs> 1707 Fourth Avenue North, Birmingham, Alabama. Hey, hey <laughs> man, that's a good way to end, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out. Hi, I'm the daughter of ECO and Miss Jamaica, Shamaria, and I just want to talk a little bit about how I met this beautiful young lady right here. And when I was younger, I came here on a trip to Alabama in this beautiful civil center, and I read books, and she shared her wisdom on the civil rights movement and everything in between. So I just wanted to share how much that I respect this woman and how much that I love that she's in my life. And I thank you so much. <laughs> I love you, dear. <laughs> <laughs>